All right, what's up, Hot Squad? Welcome back to my Hot Banger Reaction Marathon. So I got a Casper recap of the Boondocks we're going to check out, and it's called When Steep Meter Showed the Freemans He Was the OG Crash Out. So Hot Squad, I know this is going to be hilarious. Steep Meter is one of the greatest anime villains of all time. I freaking, he is so hilarious and such an a-hole. And yeah, man, I'm excited to see it. So Hot Squad, for ado, let's check it out. <laughs> So we start off with Granddad and his little dancing. He out there looking like that tank meme because he got on a fresh, clean pair of all white ones. <laughs> and these shoes most definitely will not play a vital role to the yep. story we have to so no. later. Cap. And then we <laughs> this old escape meter hitting at least 70 in a parking lot full of people. And then this, the stops and almost runs over the Freemans, but he drives for it and then rams right into Damn. Granddad's car. And then for good measure, he bags up and hits Granddad's car again. And then it's here we get our first glimpses into a good moment, which is basically to put in modern day terms a crash out that is willing to die behind his belief without any good cause of reasoning i.e. like a so to show y'all an example of a moment or a crash out you could say these two kids just start shooting at each yeah, other for no miss. good reason and then they proceed to miss every single bullet yeah. because they're the movie character that finally gets the gun pointed at the killer and then they miss every single shot so then they like hey this is stupid you right let's put the guns down and go about our business they was out there trying to have that Zuko level character development mm. and then that police come out of nowhere and they like freeze yeah. come on now dog <laughs> come on <laughs> man we come back and we get the backstory of speak meter and it's not that he's just been a hated <clears throat> nigga he's always been a hated yeah as sticking a mud see meter is an absolute definition textbook of hate this nigga, hey. nigga hated sunsets, rainbows, <laughs> huh? and even what? normal people in society. So when he got diagnosed with cancer and lost his eyes, the nigga gon' tell the doctor. Well, at least I don't gotta look at your ugly ass no more. <laughs> no way, and then the doctor told him he had three years to live. And y'all wanna know what he did with his last three years on Earth? Was it get back to charity? No. no. Or maybe the nigga volunteered? Mm -hmm. No. no. Or just maybe the completely spread of hatred. Yeah. Y'all <laughs> wanna know the wildest? It was this nigga's love of hatred, pure maniacal hatred. This <laughs> right. life for this long. So he get a rubber face and he like Who in the hell parked in my space? Huh? Oh, you must want me to call up Debo to knock your ass out again no. And then granddad <laughs> like Do no. you hit my car, are you blind? And he like, yes, I, I am, am. Hey. So, <laughs> wait, you for real? Yes, blind You got a no problem, problem with that? that. Mm, yeah, cool. yeah. Yo, old ass could have killed somebody. I'll be doing these bum ass as a favor. Getting run over by me is like visiting the seven staples of the world. Then the nigga starts bragging about being a humanitarian and then saying he hit a woman in a wheelchair. Like, imagine you being disabled and you being That's where, you disabled people. That is genuinely wild. And then granddad like, look what you did to Dorothy. You better have insurance, nigga. You better have insurance. Ass with insurance. insurance Cause you about to pay. I just judge the ball. Do. And then now granddad is trapped in a moment with the OG crash out. And we know this can only go one or two ways. Mm -hmm. So this nigga backs up and he laughing and granddad face talking about That's right. I backed into your car, nigga. What you gonna, gonna do? do? What you You're gonna, gonna do? do? And then you can see the spit particles <laughs> flying. Is a good lord. This look, Riley with this talk level instigation. Yes, father. Yeah, I heard his little punk ass voice. He's the one who stole Ampa. <laughs> Are you sure? Duh, oh, I never forget a voice. All I got is my ears. And my son ain't <laughs> tweaking out. Father, it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said put a muzzle on. <laughs> muzzle Ampa? And then Aang instantly went into the Avatar state. And you just know it's Kiyoshi driving up. Oh, it's <laughs> as crazy as hell. <laughs> cut back and Riley like... By the way, have y'all seen the Love Action series of Avatar Let's Have Better? It's actually pretty good. I, oh hell no, granddad. Let's whoop this nigga's ass right now. But Huey pulls him back and this nigga steal teeing off in Pop's face talking about jazz. You wanna do something? <laughs> and then this nigga like oh, love. Hot I smell new shoes. This nigga grins and then steps on granddad's whole yeah. new white ones. Hold on, replay that. Damn. 
And y'all can't even blame granddad. Y'all know damn well this would have made y'all tweak out too. So the only rational thing for granddad to do was to go in and try to rock this. But this nigga sneak me in the that hoe. And then he lines up his mobility stick in the go to and goes for a And then later on that evening, Huey is having a dream that that the stink meaner is basically a wannabe Afro Samurai. And then the whole time the nigga in the dream blazing, he like, damn, he really like that. This old nigga must be here to me. Huey wakes up and stink meaner had that little nigga shook, but he goes downstairs and granddad is cleaning his wounds. And then the nigga looks up at the news and he getting fried on three different networks. He even got Uncle Ruckus calling him. Damn. So granddad was getting impressed by everybody <laughs> <in> town, <laughs> even international. <laughs> and so much to the point this nigga goes back to <laughs> the store and was waiting for Steak Meter. And then he parks right by his ass and steps out and he basically challenged him to a fight. Later that day, Huey comes up to Granddad and he like, Granddad, I need to show you what you're going up against. So Huey begins to show Granddad this movie where a blind man is cooking up out of these fake ass foot clan soldiers. And this nigga Granddad is shook as fuck. So Granddad starts training and he ain't on no bulls. <laughs> Talk to train me, y'all. Excuse me, y'all. Nah, granddad get his out the mud and he getting trained by Huey and we all know that little nigga got them hoes. Yeah. So Riley the promoter of this fight, a real life janky promoter, cause <laughs> it was not planned. We skipped to the night of the fight and bro got out his money and he like, Hey, listen up, huh? I'll tell y'all one more time. This fight ain't starting until I get ten dollars from all of y'all. Nah, nigga, you talk three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Safe? Give me that. So they finna start the fight and stick me to like, I know you're scared. You scared, ain't you? You know you ain't gonna get no bitches after I whoop your ass. <laughs> hey, that's great, ain't yeah, we all know granddad's worst fear is not having no hole, so he had no choice but to lock in, but it was too late. After seeing this nigga stick me in or swing his cane around all willy-nilly, he came to the realization that he truly was not like that. And at the end of the day, he was just an old man that got lucky. But granddad was too locked in. My boy started having flashbacks, so he walks in. We hit, oh. blocks another oh. uppercut this night, and he starts beating the hell out of him. <laughs> hit him over the head, and then hit him in the head again. Hit his ass with an uppercut, and then another uppercut. <laughs> Ooh. Looking at the stars, and then a gun punch that folded this nigga like a chair had him look like the Chick fil A girl. And then he hit him with a knee, and then a kick to the face, and then he winds up, goes for a punch, and Steve Meter like, Damn, he really about to rock my shit. <laughs> and then Big Steve falls to the ground, and then a nurse comes over and checks his pulse, and this is dead. Yeah, he starts getting impressed by them to give their money back, and you know he on that Austin McBroom time and trying to dodge the IRS. <laughs> so this look remembers on TV when he saw a bunch of niggas throwing a chair and it started a fight so he like that's a great idea and then he throws the chair and all of a sudden these people started rioting and beating the fuck out of each other for no reason at all and then granddad went to jail but luckily Tom and Huey got the fight license and he just didn't kill a random old nigga on the street so later on that evening we see the Freemans are back at the store praying over stink meaner and granddad was really feeling bad for killing this old hating ass nigga but the big stink was not done with his no stage some old bullshit was a hating ass nigga, but when the world needed him most, he disappeared. And so we cut to the underworld, and this nigga is down in hill training with the devil. This huh? nigga is down there calling the <laughs> devil a bitch, waxing up <laughs> the demons. And then even the devil just had to admit that he was one real nigga, and he was like, <laughs> What? And just like that, he beats Hill and then gets beamed up. Yeah. And then a few moments later, we see Tom, and we all know the reason his name is Tom. It's because he a Uncle Tom. That's nigga. So Tom is waiting for this person to leave their spot, and some black a bumpy he comes in and steals his spot. And then we see that Tom is now trapped in a nigga moment. And this is when Stink Meaner knew that every black man was weak during that moment. So Broke gets on his car, opens his door, and starts to walk in the store. And then Tom like, hey, that, that was my space. I had my blinker on and everything. Huh? You punk ass, <laughs> ass, Uncle <laughs> Tom ass nigga. I'll be just a d ass. Don't ever your wife step to a f like me. Let me out, bust happy your wife's nigga. Let me go home and get my mother. There you go. Ooh, what is this thing, nigga? <laughs> you know what, nigga? Eat it, big nigga. I'm 
I'm tired of this mother oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Dolph Ziggler kicked this nigga in the chest Had that to replay three different times And then he like, oh yeah, look at you You was talking all that hot Just a second ago through hey, that kick in your chest. your chest Yeah, that's right You eat a dick, nigga You eat a dick Oh Oh my god, sir, are you okay? Did anybody see who left kick marks on this chest? Someone, someone help. Can somebody <laughs> tell me who accosted this man? So later on. By the way, same actor who voiced Steve Meaner also voiced Tom. Cedric Yarborough, he voices both Steve Meaner and Tom DeWall. That's crazy. He is so talented. When we skipped up Tom and Corey, and they talked about this lady has been GTA throwing niggas out of cars. <laughs> and then this nigga with a golf club stole his wallet and then proceeded to drive <laughs> this nigga car into a JC Benz. Like, what the hell? I'm surprised Steve Meaner ain't come out of Tom right there and sign her to the hateocracy. <laughs> but Tom walks up and he's like, let me ask you a question. <laughs> What's good? What's good, nigga? <laughs> oh, oh Excuse me, Mr. Dubois. What's really good? Well, what I really said was that, um... <laughs> what's really good? And then everybody in the court started laughing, and then the judge was like, Mr. Dubois, is there something you would like to share with the court? <laughs> Yo, court. <laughs> this nigga proceeds to get on the table, and then start Yo, jumping on that whole screaming, Fuck your court, nigga. Fuck <laughs> your court. <laughs> so Tom realized he was tweaking, and he gets up and runs and goes to the bathroom, and he sees that nigga stink meaner has possessed this nigga. Ooh, what's shit. good? <laughs> and then later on that night, y'all, this nigga goes home and it's like, honey, I'm home. And then he starts standing behind her like that one nigga that stand behind a <laughs> girl when they buying him some. But his wife like, hey, honey. But again, that is not Tom. This nigga <laughs> stink meter done possessed him. So he like, oh, yeah. I think it's that relation. Tonight. Oh, my God, Tom, what's gotten into you? Like, it's an old crash out that <laughs> hates niggas. But he like, oh, the same thing. That's about to get you. And then he take Tom wife upstairs and all I can say is this. <laughs> Make it do what it do. But we skipped a granddad on the toilet doing his whole skincare routine, getting ready for his date tonight. And then the big stink walks in, dragging an axe on the carpet and walking upstairs. And then he texted his hoes on MySpace. So this nigga starts buzzing down the door and he like, I'm back. <laughs> and then this nigga Granddad is literally screaming from the bathroom. So Granddad starts to send a message to Riley and Huey from the bathroom. And that man got his whole junk out. And then Steve Maker <laughs> kicks down the door and then Granddad on the ground in a fetal position. And then he goes to cut him with the axe, but then he misses. And then Granddad <laughs> yeah, runs see that. So he starts chasing him down the stairs while his package out. And he trying to decapitate yeah, this nigga. So yeah. Big Steve starts chasing him down the stairs. And Granddad finally pulls up his drawers. And he like, Tom, what the hell is going on with you today? And Steve Meaner like, you don't remember me. You don't remember my name. You don't remember my name. <laughs> and then he the got a granddad. What's my name? Don't wear an ass, nigga. <laughs> I my name. My mama ain't name me. I. What's my name, nigga? What's, What's my, my name? name? Big Stink. And then Stink Meaner turns around and he like, that's right, nigga. Look, I don't know how you got here, Big Stink, but your old ass need to go back to hell. And then Stink Meaner tell them they finna get a first class one way ticket to hell right along with them. And then Huey throws Granddad his weapon, that bell. Then Huey runs in, goes for a kick, but it gets blocked. This Stink with a heel kick, but then Huey catches one right back. He kicks him, gets blocked, and then goes for a punch, and then gets blocked again. And then I guess Huey said it's my turn. It was such a good fight, man. The entire, this episode, when um Stink Meaner took over Tom's body, one of the best episodes in the series. For now, because he goes for a punch but gets blocked, then he weaves him right, tackles him, and then gets kneed in the door. Stink tells Granddad to stop. You cannot cook. And then hits the belt, hits him in the chest with his palm, and then blocks you. Hits him with the right, and I'm dazed, and then he wants a left and a right, but gets popped in the face with a right, and then he falls down. And now it's Riley's turn to get cooked. He runs up, goes for a punch, gets blocked, and then Big Stink hits the nigga in the liver and drops him. Huey comes in, flips and jumps off the stairs, and goes for a chop, but Big Stink dodges that and the kick. He drops down and we use the kick twice and then he goes for a kick but misses and then Riley comes in, goes for right, gets blocked and then Huey goes for one two and he blocking all of them holes. Mm -hmm. go lock. Nigga ain't got hit once, not a scratch. <laughs> and then he punches Riley, nigga spit particles fly out of his mouth and then he kicks Huey and then Granddad comes in and he misses and then kicks him in the cheek. Had that nigga Granddad looking at the ceiling, he said, I'm gonna get back for that first fight. He comes back in and dodges the leg kick and then he kicks Granddad and punches Huey at the same time, but Huey flies over him. Drop kicks him, falls on the ground, and then kick flips up and flies over the leg kick. And then Huey jumps again, jumps again, got a frame, 
game, and then Granddad Bell comes out of nowhere, grabs that nigga's arm, cause we all know Granddad surgical with that hoe. Get over here! Pull him in and his into the living room, and then chops him in the back of the neck. And while he got all of it as laid out, he like, is that all y'all punk? Got yeah, cool. So they had to make up a plan because they was like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. So Huey runs up and goes for a kick and he gets back and get back down. And then Granddad wraps his leg with the belt and then pulls him down and jumps on that nigga. Deep meaner overpowers him and then starts choking him. And then that's when Riley comes in and cracks this nigga over that head with a lamp. And while Granddad getting choked by Stick Meaner, Riley goes and grabs a base and then he smashes that yep. shit over his head. And then for good measure, he grabs a mini statue and then yep. makes that nigga go night night. Hey, yo. Jeez. And then they take him upstairs and tie a big stink. So we skip the granddad because he got a date and he just leave they ass up there with hmm. big stink. So granddad rushes downstairs and he open the door and he like, well, hello, cutie. Huh? And then she instantly looks down at this man, whole package talking about this, some whale well, hello. This is weird, buddy. You're weird. weird. So they on a date and granddad like, sorry for having my thing out early. <laughs> and then she starts telling him how she loved <laughs> nigga with a dad by like, we do not care. <laughs> and upstairs, they have this nigga Tom tied up. And this a steam meter comes through and he yelling from upstairs like, Robert Freeman, you were Damn! Oh my god, what is that? Um, what do you mean? I don't hear anything. And he twitching and shit. We come back to upstairs and this nigga breaking free. He like, you got a day, Robert. Did you feel like you'd be lying on your dating site and you beat up the blind? Damn! Oh my god, you're sick. Wait, no, baby. This is the TV. But Steve Meter fucked up his place, so they call up Uncle Ruckus for an exorcism and he like, yeah. oh, why, Lord bless you, Robert. And then huh? he like, wait, hold up. This is the part of the plan. Uncle Ruckus. Shut up, little man. Y'all follow me. Oh, and then all I'ma say is this nigga pulled out a bag of a bunch of shit and used it all the time to let's say get a the right <laughs> these things right here. Strike fear into a nigga's heart. And then this nigga pulls out a job application. <laughs> <laughs> so they go upstairs and ruckus like a bull oh, conversation God. with a nigga. The nigga will lie. The nigga will make excuses. The nigga will use big words like T.I. that he don't really know. The nigga might even try to rap or hit the Dougie. And then he gets to the door and he like, oh yeah, there's powerful bigotry at work here. So Ruckus walks in and Steve Meter on a bed. He like, who in the hell are you? Nigga, my name is Reverend Father Uncle Ruckus. No relation. relation. So he pulls out his baton and Steve Meter is like, is that all you got, nigga? Oh no, that's just the tip of this ice ball. Hmm. And then he pulls out a comic book and he like, read, nigga, read. And then they just start jumping this nigga and saying, and I quote, nigga, get your black ass out of here. And hours later, he's still being possessed by Big Steak. So the spirit of the nigga that got drop kicked by him pops up and he told Huey that he has to make peace with Steak Meter. So Huey like, Steak Meter, you hate this, right? What? I sure do. Wait, no, wait. I, mean, I hate everyone in general, but niggas especially. Huh? And Ruckus, you hate black people too, right? I wouldn't exactly call them people, but yes. Yeah, stupid. I have stupid. a deep distaste for niggas. And then these niggas start bonding over their distaste for black people and Nick in general. And then this nigga Steak Meter starts to get exercised and sent back to hell. And then all was well in the world until that nigga came back like two more times. <laughs> I appreciate y'all for watching. I was supposed to drop that Winter Soldier video for y'all, but it got claimed. So oh, damn. Pass, I'm gonna post that for y'all. But with all that being said, I'll see y'all next week. And it's not a maybe this time. I'll actually see y'all next week. Hmm. All right. W recap, Casper. This was, this was such a great recap, man, because... Steve Meter was definitely one of the greatest animated villains of all time, and the episodes, each episode he was in, he was so, whew, he was such a watch, such a great watch, man. <laughs> hey, seriously, man. But the, the fact, like I said before, um, Cedric Yarborough voiced both Steve Meter and Tom DeWatt is crazy, man. I mean, dude's super talented, man. He is talented as hell for that. So, yeah, the more you know, right? So, yeah, Hot Squad, that is my conclusion of my reaction to Casper's Boondocks recap. So, if you enjoyed this, please hit that button, comment, share your thoughts. What is your favorite Boondocks episode? How old were you when Boondocks came out? And have you seen every single season of it? Excuse me, have you seen every single of it? So, Hot Squad, I'm gonna have to call for a call today because I am tired. See me, I'm yawning a like heck. But yes, I am tired. Um, I will do the rest of my reactions tomorrow, of course. So yes, I've got about a good, what, seven more to react to, of course. But yeah, Hot Squad, this is gonna be it for today for me. So, Hot Squad, safe out this guy. Peace out. I'm going to see y'all later for tomorrow, actually, for more Heartbanger reactions continuing this week. So, Hot Squad, please stay tuned for tomorrow, and I'll see y'all later. Goodbye.